Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Extension Tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to use Node.js's FS or file system to manage files in your extension. Now in the past, I've kind of been a stickler for going into a JSX file because I already knew how to manage files and do stuff inside of there. But of course, there are multiple ways to do things. So today I'm going to be showing you the most useful methods and functions to use uh, from FS and how to basically create folders, read files, write files, and copy files. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub where you can also get this extension testing code uh, to start off with and follow us there for coding updates as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description. Check out our new two perk system rather than four, uh, where we have members and supporters, where you will get Discord status, badges, emojis, weekly member pulls, weekly member live streams, and just come out and help the community. And of course, you can check out the links below for AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some of the other cool stuff I make. All right, so there are a ton of methods built into the FS, but there's only a few that we really need and only a few that we're gonna go over today. So I have this folder on my desktop called testing, and we're gonna use that to kind of do all of our operations. Firstly, I have my main JS here inside of my extension testing, and we're gonna go through these one by one. These aren't fully coded out, which is what we're gonna do now. Um, but to get started, we first, of course, you ha will have to have included uh, Node.js in your extension. I've made tutorials on this in the past, um, but basically you just need to enable it inside of your manifest and make sure your versions of CSF, CSXS are matching your extension manifest and your required runtime. After that, inside of whatever, wherever you put your JavaScript, we need to now include FS. So we can create a const because we are using extensions and we'll say const FS is equal to require and we will simply require the file system. Now. The first and easiest thing to do is to make a folder. Uh, Node.js has essentially some methods or functions that are synchronous and some that are async. And what that means is basically um, there are methods that we can just put on one line and not have to wrap anything inside of it or have a callback function. And there are some where we have to wrap other code uh, inside of their callback because basically it will take different amounts of time and you want to make sure all your code is executed sequentially for the most part. So firstly, to create a folder, we will first call, of course, our FS variable, which basically has the whole library inside of it. And we're going to run what's called make directory sync. And if you search inside of the actual guide, you can see we have FS promises make directory. There's actually quite a few uh, options here, but here we have make directory, a normal make directory for the FS. But because of that, that's going to return us with a promise and we don't want to have to resolve that. So we're going to use make directory sync, which we can just do on one single line. All this requires is a path and then some options. So for the path, we need to reference our desktop here. And obviously I'm using the entire path and just copying and pasting it. But in most cases, you'll actually want to, of course, reference real paths using math. So it's, you know, it works on everyone's computer essentially. So we have, we can say our testing folder here. Let's create a new folder called new folder. And then for our options, basically you can set recursive to true or false. And according to the actual guide here, you can see we have recursive mode default false. And I think that just means if recursive returns undefined or if recursive is true, the first directory path created. So let's just keep it at true and we'll save this, load up After Effects and launch our extension. We shouldn't see anything in the extension but now inside of our testing folder, we have uh, our new folder. So if we run this again, we shouldn't have any conflicts. Um, so it shouldn't like, it shouldn't create another folder. It should just keep that folder there. So that's perfect. And now what we can do back in our code, let's go ahead and write a file. I did read file first, but let's go ahead and write one first. Then we can read it afterwards. Actually, better yet, let's copy a file from somewhere else. So. Uh, after we've created our new directory called new folder, we're going to do fs.copy file sync. And once again, the sync just means we can basically put this all in one line and not have to be like, oh yeah, 
Here's our callback function with our results. And then the rest of our code needs to go in here. So sync is super helpful. And all we need to do to copy a file is provide the original file path and then the new file path. And this of course includes the file extension. So what better images to copy than some James Webb goodies? Um, let's go ahead and just grab this. And we'll need to type in our OG file path, which you can of course have as a variable, but I'm just gonna hard code it here. Um, so let's see, side of my users. And maybe the one disadvantage, I'm sure there, there's probably a method to do this or some kind of snippet of code, but the thing I miss about extend script files is that you could use the, the tilde and say like, oh yeah, this is my pictures folder. I don't know if you can do that with FS. If you can, let me know and I will make sure to uh, start using that. So we have our pictures folder. Um, my subfolder here is just called web. And then we have this file, which we're then going to copy um, to this folder. We might as well, let's make a variable for this. We can even use let, let uh, new folder equal to that. We can just say new folder path to be a little more specific. And then for our new file path, we're going to say new folder path plus we'll need a slash. And we can actually name it whatever we want here. We don't have to have this crazy name off to the side here. We can just say dot PNG. And now I go ahead and go back to my new folder and launch the extension. You can see now we get space dot PNG. So we've now created a folder, copied a file. Now what we can do is read and write to files. Of course, reading files will vary upon the file type, but FS actually gives you quite a bit of control over reading different uh, file types and formats. So let's first go ahead and read this file. In fact, we can even continue to make variables and say, let copied file path equal this, I guess. And then we could say, let um, OG file path equal this. And this will just allow us to be a little more customizing with things. Um, and then we can reuse these variables. So instead of having to repaste all that for the read file, I can just say, grab my copied file path, which is this space.png. And we have UTF. Let's see what our other options are. Let's go ahead and say fs.read file. I guess there, there is a read file sync as well. Um, in this case, I am not using it though. So I will go ahead and use this as an example to illustrate what to do when there's no sync in the name. Um, say fs.read file. We will search for that. So first we need the path. We have our copied file path. Then we need some options. In this case, our options are just using UTF-8. Let's take a look at the example here. They use UTF-8. I wonder if there's got to be a list of the other options. Encoding. I could just say, this is where Google comes in handy. FS uh, types of encoding. We could say FS read file encoding. Maybe this will provide more information on the individual page. Default value is UTF-8. Yes. But where is the actual list of encoding I do know that you can do like JSON um that's quite annoying that I can't easily find that well I think for all intents and purposes let's just keep it at UTF-8 because that is uh, kind of the standard that I use even when I work on uh, extensions and stuff in other languages so we have a copied file path formatting is going to be UTF-8 and then a callback function the callback function uh, as defined here basically says um, we need to give it an error and some data. If we get an error back, um, then we need to manage that error. Otherwise, the data we get back is gonna be the data from our file. So I'm gonna have a variable called my uh, file data. I'm gonna parse my, my data that's coming in here. And because this is gonna be image data, probably not gonna be super easy to read or might even be in some weird formatting. But let's have a look. In this case, don't think I'm getting any proper results. Your new folder path. Let's go ahead and alert. It gives us an error, so or it gives us an error option. So we can say alert error, maybe alert data. And maybe we can't uh, parse our, our data in this case because it's an image, so we can't really do that. Null, 
and PNG with some encoding. So there is no error and the data is indeed coming in. I think to better illustrate kind of what we can do, we should probably do something with simple text. So I'm going to temporarily replace this image that I'm using. And we're instead going to copy from my documents. I have this uh, plugin ideas.txt. We're going to copy that. We're just going to call it space.txt. And let's go ahead and run this. If we check our folder, we have space.txt, but we're not getting to our alert. I think once again, that's because we're trying to parse the data. If we want to parse the data, it's probably only going to work if it's coming in from an actual JSON file. And we're using the wrong variable here, file data instead of data. Now we should get our nice uh, list of plugin ideas. Of course, internal JavaScript alerts are really bad at displaying all this. Um, which kind of defeats the purpose of displaying it that way, but you can put it in a in an HTML element or something like that. That allows us to read the file. You can parse the data if it's a JSON incoming. You can read raw text data, raw PNG data. Finally, let's go ahead and see how we can write a file. Let's go ahead and say, in my prospective case, I have uh, maybe an object I've created, right? So I can just say, let my object and let's just fill it with some values. So we'll say color, blue, size, big. Super simple. We have an object here. Now, to write a file, we're going to use the sync once again because it's super easy. We're going to say append file sync. Basically, what this means is we're going to append information to a file or add to the file. The first argument is going to be the file path, the path, path, full path of the file plus the extension. And the second argument is going to be the actual content we're filling it in with. So the file I want to uh, do here, first I want to see if I can create one from scratch. So I'm going to take my new folder path and just add a uh, test.txt. And let's try and add, actually we can make this .json. And we'll add my object. We may need to stringify it, but let's run it first. In this case, we don't get anything. Um, let's just try some temporary test, uh, text. Okay, there we go. In this case, we get text written to it. So because this is an object, let's try json.stringify my object. Now we have our object written into here, which of course we can then read back in later and modify using read file and do all kinds of stuff from copying and all sorts of file system stuff. And don't forget to check out the entire list because I mean, this this is just a huge list. There's almost a, a synchronous and an asynchronous example for each of these. Um, and there's a few other useful things I didn't go over today like chmod, which I've kind of discussed in previous uh, tutorials for extensions, but this allows you to you know give different permissions to your files. And there's some other useful stuff in here that you may want to look into. But these are the base general file system uh, methods and functions, and that's how you use them in your Adobe extension. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates, as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you haven't joined our Discord server already, make sure you do to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can join as one of a uh, member or supporter, which comes with loyalty badges, emojis, member polls, supporter live streams, Discord status, and helps us out financially. And also in the description, check out the links to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to check out some other cool stuff I make. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.